So I am going to talk about a fresh potato market uh, outlook, uh, and I'm going to kind of start that off by doing a little bit of a, uh, a then and now uh, exercise. So uh, before I get into that, though, I, I do want to uh, talk about uh, United Potato Growers of America's uh, mission statement. Uh, it's why we exist. It's why we're here. It's uh, in service to uh, you, the potato growers, our membership. So United Potato Growers of America is a federated cooperative, and it's made up of the local farmer cooperatives. And that objective is to advance grower sustainability by tracking and assessing supply price relationships for major fresh potato varieties in major potato producing regions in the country. So again, that's why we exist, that's why we're here. So a little bit of a then and now exercise, farming technology. Deanna gave a, a great presentation, uh, we thank her for that. Uh, you heard a number of things that are, that are coming at us and it certainly is changing rapidly and just as she said, the future is here now. What did it look like though uh, almost 100 years ago? Uh, this is a, a five-man survey crew uh, circa early 1900s, 1918. And I think, uh, I think my grandfather was uh, as pictured there in that crew. So they would uh, probably get uh, you know, a field or two uh, done in a, in a day, something like that. Uh, well, how, how do we do it today? We have GPS-guided drone systems, and that can probably accomplish uh, what they used to accomplish in, in weeks, probably uh, in less than an hour. So uh, again, just the incredible advancement that you see there. A plug for our green friends uh, again. Uh, again, thanks to Deanna. But uh, this is a uh, John Deere Spoker Model D, uh, again, back in the early 1900s. Uh, where have we come now? You saw a lot of, of what she showed uh, earlier in, in the advancements. Here's, uh, here's a, a John Deere prototype tractor, driverless tractor, that you're probably going to be seeing in the fields uh, coming at you real soon. So how, do, how does that apply to uh, the fresh potato market and, and our advancements in technology, if you will? Probably in the not too distant past, uh, within even uh, a decade or two ago, certainly uh, someone would ask themselves, how should I supply the market to maximize my return on investment? Now, UPGA has a very extensive database uh, that can help assess uh, any individual region's supply price relationship. And then the growers uh, can make those supply market decisions and supply the market at a profitable, profitable and balanced level. That's the power, if you will, of the, uh, of the data and the information uh, that can be provided and the growers can use uh, to advance their, their bottom line and that long-term sustainability. So now, uh, let's talk a, bit, a, little, a little bit about uh, the fresh market uh, uh, economics. Among all the fresh uh, produce uh, market data points, uh, which of those data points uh, would you think contains the most information? And probably the one that contains the most information, honestly, is the basic price. That's the, the return you get on, on your product. So what does price say about supply? If price is below production cost, the market is oversupplied, and that's uh, certainly unacceptable uh, uh, to the grower. If price exceeds production cost, then supply is acceptable. So the question is, how can growers assure that that price, that their price, that they get back for their, their products exceeds that production cost. And the answer, certainly uh, easier said than done, but the answer is uh, simple in its form, and that is to supply the market at that proper, appropriate, uh, balanced supply level. So to illustrate that point, uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna, put up a few examples of what's going on in, in today's uh, uh, potato markets. These are examples from, uh, from the very recent past here. First of all, a, a supply price example of a, of a region uh, this year. So uh, 
most of you are used to seeing these, these kind of charts. The, uh, the background there is the, the three-year average uh, supply uh, in this region, and it shows about the last 12 weeks, so uh, basically the first quarter or so of this, this crop year. Uh, the dot dashed line is, is last year's uh, supply situation uh, in shipments. The red line is, is this year. So what would you expect here with this? Last year, the GRI at those levels, uh, the uh, grower return index, if you will, is uh, $6.14 at that supply level. With that supply increase this year, you, you can see what to expect. It's not certainly rocket science, but the uh, GRI this year uh, in this region uh, is at uh, 4.36 at that supply level. Second example, this, this is a more uh, uh, regional uh, balance situation. And you can see those lines, although there's obviously some, some uh, minor changes along the way from, from week to week, but more or less that supply situation is in, is in a more balanced approach. So you would expect certainly a more consistent uh, uh, GRI return for the grower. So last year at that level, it was uh, slightly above probably overall where, where it is today, uh, the GRI was $7.58. Where is it this year? Seven seventy three. So up a little bit, but certainly very close. It's a, uh, it's a trend and again a production level that, that, uh, that is more balanced. And the point to make uh, from the early slides, as I, as I mentioned, is that balanced supply situation is what you want to achieve to, to improve that bottom line. Let's look at the red potato market. This is uh, another great example of, of, that, of that discussion, certainly. Uh, it's gonna be no surprise what you're gonna, what you're gonna see here. Um, last year's GRI at $8.58 at that supply level. Again, over this 12-week average period for the first part of this, the, this crop year compared to last year. This year, uh, with that supply situation uh, down somewhat significantly, the GRI is at $12.68 at that supply level. And this last one is just another region uh, of the country, uh, again, um, uh, for the first 12 weeks of this year, but uh, it really starkly points out uh, the, the contrast here and what that supply situation means to the uh, bottom line, the grower return index. Last year, the GRI at 949, which is, which is a good level, but uh, this year with that supply situation in this region, the GRI is uh, over $15 uh, at that supply level. So keep those examples in mind as we uh, move ahead into a fresh market overview for this year. Keep in mind how those relationships work. Like I said, it's nothing you haven't heard before or haven't seen before, uh, but just keep that in, in mind as we look ahead uh, for the rest of this year as well as, uh, as take a look at, at uh, next year. So the, uh, the russet supply situation, uh, this is an eight year history going back to the 2009 crop. Uh, over 78 million hundredweight of, uh, of russets were, were shipped that year. And this is all in, in a million hundredweight. We'll, we'll talk in hundredweight, Cedric, if that's okay. Although don't, don't worry, in the US actually, uh, our friends in the Columbia Basin have the ability to speak in tons as well, so we're, uh, we're, we're some, some averse in that. So the uh, supply situation for this year uh, at 72, this is a projection of what we will ship for russet potatoes in this year, 70, a little over 72 million. Now that's not um, what you would call a real significant increase over last year, so you would expect a manageable crop. Now there's certainly, uh, and I think as you all well know this, there's certainly some regional uh, differences, some regional variations this year in that, in that supply outlook and uh, what the shipments are going to be. But overall, uh, uh, potato shipments projected to be just a little over 72 million, about a million sacks more than last year. So how does that translate into the, the shipping pattern? Again, you're used to seeing this, uh, this kind of graph. Again, the backdrop is the, the yellow area, and that's last year's uh, uh, supply situation. The top blue line is uh, what we would call a, a balanced supply scenario, and that's based on uh, a lot of market data, a lot of help from, uh, from our friend, uh, Mr. Huffaker at uh, North American Potato Market News to, to determine this. And uh, when you overlay that balanced supply situation in the russet potato market, 
you can see uh, how those weekly shipments are going to hit that. So the bars then are this year's uh, shipments. And to the left side, you will see the uh, green bars that's actual uh, to date. So this is roughly through Christmas time. And then the blue bars uh, for the rest of the right half uh, or the right part of the, uh, of the chart show what's projected to be shipped uh, again in the Russet market for the remainder of this year. And you can see that uh, certainly in the, uh, in the first uh, number of weeks, uh, there was some what you would call uh, oversupply to the market. But uh, again, as you saw in that last graph, it's only uh, about a million total hundredweights. So as we finish out this year, uh, those bars overall, again, this is US total, uh, come up to that, uh, that balanced supply demand picture. What about the red market? So again, an eight-year history of the, uh, of the supply uh, out of the, the red sector. And this is um, a little bit deceiving, if you will. The graph uh, kind of starts at the top of the graph and starts at 12,500 or 12,500,000 weight. Uh, so you're kind of seeing the top of that. So the, the trend uh, probably isn't quite as stark as that. But if you were put, to put a line on that over the top of the graph, it'd be it'd be somewhat flat probably, but down uh, over a million sacks uh, from last year in the red market, that 14.2 million is what's projected to be shipped uh, out, of, out of the red sector. So again, translating that into the shipments uh, early in the year versus what we expect to come and, and the returns in the red market, as you all know, and as some of the, uh, some of the graphs uh, just displayed from those price examples, uh, is very good, and that's exactly what you would expect. There's those spaces, those gaps, if you will, between the supply bar situation and, again, that balanced demand. So for the red market, we also have that balanced demand line. And the rest of the year plays out uh, in similar fashion. Uh, you see a few spaces there below the balanced uh, line, uh, but the, for the most part, uh, either up to that or, or somewhat below that. So let's talk about the yellow segment. This is the one area, uh, certainly in the potato industry, maybe not the only one, but uh, the, that has uh, the, the opportunity, the, the growth uh, out there that we've seen over the last number of years. You can see those, uh, those shipments in the yellow market, the trend line. We will uh, go over 8 million hundredweight this year in, in yellow shipments, and that's starting to become a pretty big number. Uh, it's not not quite 10% of the total yet, but it's starting to close in on that. So the, the yellow category certainly has that opportunity and the price reflects that. So that's why, that's why when you look at the, uh, the weekly shipping bars in this arena, you would look at that chart and you would expect there to be some downward pricing pressure. But in fact, with the, the yellow demand uh, where it is, that's not the case. The yellow pricing uh, has been very good as we saw in that uh, earlier example graph, and uh, even with those bars exceeding last year uh, in a very good situation because of the demand. We don't have a balanced uh, supply line on, on yellows. It's something we're working on and developing. Uh, it takes a little more uh, because they're uh, relatively, in, in terms of prominence, have just come up in the last few years, uh, as well as the fact that you do have that increasing demand line. And so uh, uh, ascertaining that uh, is in the process, and we'll probably have that when we look at this next year. So uh, let's talk about what we think the 2017 crop, uh, crop outlook comes down to. I want to show just a couple slides real quickly. We actually touched on this. Certainly the, uh, uh, the Robo presentation and, and others today uh, talked somewhat about this, so I won't spend a lot of time on it. But, uh, Jesse Ossabel, who many of you remember, spoke uh, to this uh, summit, I think it was a couple years ago, maybe three, but um, he, he showed some slides, and these are an updated version of a couple of those slides, and it's just, it's just something to put in the back of your minds for backdrop as we talk about this going forward. So you, you can see those commodity levels that were talked about earlier and what's happening in most of the agricultural sector, and that what you'd certainly call uh, an oversupply situation and what that's done to price. So you can see corn and wheat there. Uh, potatoes, the, the potato line, I'm actually gonna look a little closer at that in this graph. That production line is what you saw in the, the graph before, so that blue line in the middle 
uh, mirrors that red line here. So uh, what drives that though? The, the other thing I want to make the point on this graph is that production from uh, it's probably late 90s, uh, 2000 area, uh, if you put a straight line on that, is actually, is actually somewhat flat, even though uh, acreage has gone down uh, somewhat significantly. Again, it goes back to the, the efficiencies and growing those the more potatoes on less land that, uh, that Deanne also talked about. And so with the production line there, what happens is, uh, of course, uh, to drive that uh, production with the area harvested line is the yield. And so the thing that, that has to be factored in uh, every year is that we're gonna hit trend line yield and that goes up every year. So growers becoming more and more efficient. It's a matter of the precision ag that Deanna talked about. It's a matter of the precision application of not only fertilizer, but water and uh, pesticides. It's the advancements in, in storage technology and all those things that uh, those yield numbers uh, are gonna continue to climb. I'm sure people probably, you know, in 1970 looked at this and said for the last 20 years, we've increased our, our yields significantly and we probably got nowhere else to go. They probably got to 1985 and said, uh, you know, boy, it looks like uh, we probably topped out. But the fact of the matter is that's continued to go up and up and up every year and will probably continue to do so uh, because it has for the last, last 65 years. My friend uh, Brett Jensen told me the story of somebody uh, he knows that uh, in Idaho has uh, ha had on their license plates for a lot of years, 300 CWT. That was his goal, Three, 300 sacks. That was you know a, a per acre, very very good goal back then. He had to change that uh, 10 years ago to, to 400 CWT, and he's probably going to have to get a new license plate uh, before too long that says 500. And so. Anyway, the point being, uh, as growers plan for those things, plan for their acreage, plan for their own operations success, they have to factor those, those yield equations in that the, the long-term trend is going up. So remember back to uh, the, the, the Jesse's uh, updated slides, what's going on in alternative crop pricing. Uh, this, uh, again, provided by uh, Mr. Huffaker at uh, North American Potato Market News. And Bruce runs a, a very uh, sophisticated and, and uh, precise model that, uh, that shows what, with all these inputs, the, with these key indicators, what, what's going to happen in the coming year. So if you just took this, if you ignored the, basically the whole rest of the chart except for that top line, that top line IGRI, that's the Idaho Grower Return Index, down, it's down almost 22%. So what would you expect, if you're just looking at that alone, what would you expect would happen with acreage if that was the only key indicator, the only point of data that you were looking at? You would think there would be a very significant reduction in acreage. However, keep in mind what the, what the rest of this is now showing and what we heard from, from the other presenters today is happening in the rest of the ag world. Uh, wheat almost 20% uh, down year over year. It's the same story with, with barley, with malt barley, with hay and, and with corn. And so uh, with all those factors uh, factored into the model, we'll see in a second uh, how that lays out. Before we get there, I want to show, this was, uh, this was a slide in last year's presentation that, uh, that Jerry did. And um, that's going to look, again, that's the Idaho Fresh Grower Return in Index, and that was the projection last year at, the, at this event. And uh, sadly, that, those numbers uh, near that confluence of those bars are, are going to look a little too familiar to folks, but that acreage change across the top is, is total potato production uh, in the U.S., and it's not only fall production, it's spring, summer, and winter seasons as well, so the fall crop is probably... I don't know, 85 or 86 percent of that number, but it does include all potato production for, for all seasons. The yield over there, that was the, that was the trend line yield bar at, at 431. Uh, Idaho hit that, uh, they actually exceeded it, I think, by a little bit. So uh, th this is where the, the GRI uh, was projected to, to lay out from last year. So let's talk about uh, this year here, uh, or this year coming up, 2017. The crop, uh, you can see the, the, the bar in the middle there is the, uh, the trend yield projection uh, for 2017. So it's gone up a little bit. It's probably 433, 434 right in there. 
So uh, what about acreage? I didn't put a line on here because uh, on the vertical axis because the, the point I really want to make, uh, that we want to make uh, as United Potato Growers is uh, we, don't have to be, we don't have to be slaves to this, uh, this model. We don't have to just take what's coming at us with the, with, with the knowledge, with the information, with, with the data that uh, the local organizations and the national organizations can provide. Uh, we can utilize that data to make those, those decisions that are going to have a positive impact on, on a grower's bottom line. What the model, what Bruce's model shows is that uh, all things being equal with those alternative crop pricing, there would be a 3.2% acreage increase, uh, not a decrease, as like I mentioned, you would expect from that top line on that, that alternative pricing graph with the IRI where it's at. So 3.2% increase, that's on the far right-hand side of that, of that chart. What we need, uh, you know, what you would expect to get if you're making those decisions based on data and based on the information is to get over on the left-hand side of, of that chart and, uh, and probably even a little further off to the left than, uh, than we're even showing. But uh, what we would want to see is a minimum of a 4% uh, acreage decrease. So again, it comes down to that, that power of, of the knowledge and the understanding that, that growers can, can get from this, from uh, events like this, from hearing the other presenters, from the data, like I said, that is supplied by the local chapters as well as United that can deliver that information to make those proper decisions to, to hit a balanced uh, supply and demand situation. So again, just uh, to look back at that price, price example where there is that, that balanced supply, you see those, those GRIs that uh, are certainly in a, in a favorable position. So the conclusion to this, uh, and I've already kind of alluded to it, potato growers uh, do not have to be a slave. They don't have to uh, participate, if you will, in that, uh, that depressed commodity crop uh, pricing. There's a couple, couple reasons for that, a couple aspects to this. Uh, that I'll mention briefly in closing, and that is our business uh, model is such that we have the opportunity to, to depend on ourselves instead of external forces for that financial future. The first part of this is uh, something we've talked a little bit about already before, but uh, that's the contracted business, uh, certainly in the frozen processing sector and the dehydrated uh, processing, processing sector. Um, it certainly doesn't remove risk entirely, but, uh, but does mitigate that. We know where we're at before, before we put a seed piece in the ground. The second aspect is that uh, what I've already talked about for uh, most of the, the time here is in the fresh produce industry, price is always dictated by supply. And again, with that knowledge, with that information, uh, the, the growers can get, uh, we, we can know within pennies what a, what a certain price, uh, what a certain supply production situation will yield in terms of pricing. And we can have a positive influence on that. We can, we can correct that. So that's what I would leave you with. Uh, I want to thank you. Um, I, uh, before I uh, close, I, I want to give a quick plug for the United uh, uh, Potato Podcast. We do that weekly. Uh, Buzz does a really good job with that. It's a 15-minute market update uh, available to United members. Uh, it's a review of shipments, prices, ads, other trends in the, in the arena, in the potato industry. You can watch from anywhere on any device, and you can, uh, as a member with a membership login, uh, you, can, you can get into that and see that weekly. Uh, the expert hours, I will be around. I uh, don't have an exact time on there because I'll be there most of the time for the, the rest of the Potato Expo. So for those of you I haven't met, I will love to meet you. Those I, I do know, please stop by, say hi. We'd love to chat, and if uh, anybody has any questions for me, uh, we, will, we will certainly do that. Yeah.